Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Not Your Therapist podcast. I am Kelly. And I am Brittany. If you haven't heard any of our episodes before, we are a newer podcast. And basically, we talk about some serious issues, but from a non-professional perspective. We obviously have, you know, some good input because we have personally gone through the things that we talk about or we have guests on the show that have also gone through things. So we have personal input on this podcast and we keep it lighthearted so that it's not too heavy to listen to. And then obviously we're going to throw in some episodes that are a little bit more fun, like today's episode, for example. Yeah, today we are going to be live, I guess, looking up some frequent dreams or reoccurring dreams that we have. We both have, what, seven or eight reoccurring dreams that obviously we just have like all the time my reoccurring dreams like have you ever had the exact same dream before like where it's identical I get annoyed in my dreams yeah because you know what's gonna happen yeah if I have the same dream that I've had before even if it's a little bit it doesn't have to be exactly the same but I'm like oh okay great now I have to run away from this person and you know what I don't feel like running right now Even in my dreams, I'm lazy. (laughs) (laughs) Which is funny because, like, if you're aware of it, you would think that you'd be able to control it and change it into something different. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because I do have very lucid dreams where I can control it. But I wonder if it's only a certain type of dream that I can control. Yeah, probably. I think we should definitely look into that, into lucid dreaming, because I don't know. Well, I've never had the exact identical dream before. I just have reoccurring dream themes yeah so same kind of scenario but like a different situation each time right so this will be interesting to learn about in this episode I know me too what we can say is that we haven't actually looked up any of the meanings yet we've just kind of written down our themes some of our themes are the same and we're just we found a couple of websites we're just gonna look those up with each other and kind of see what it all means I'm really excited (laughs) me too (laughs) We're going to find out a lot about ourselves today. Yeah. (laughs) Even the ones that I was looking at last night, I was like, I'm really messed up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, Um, I'm scared. Which is funny because last night I actually had one of my reoccurring dreams. Ah, how perfect. So why don't we start with that one? Because I think you have it too. Yeah, Um, sure. Last night in my dream... I so right now I'm doing Invisalign and I had a dream that I ate something and then cracked my Invisalign and then all of my teeth fell out inside my Invisalign. Yep. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, that's probably my most reoccurring dream is losing my teeth. It happens all the time. All the time. Let's look at what a dream about losing teeth might mean. This is one of the ones that I kind of looked up last night. You did? I did a little bit and there's a few different things but go ahead and show me what you you find and then tell me if you think it's like relatable to you or if it's totally off because I've I've looked up some things and I'm like this doesn't make sense. Okay I've brought up teeth falling out or wobbling. Okay yeah. And it says the teeth falling out dream or should I say nightmare. (laughs) accurate turns out this dream is very common because when we're young and we lose our teeth for the first time we're scared it's no surprise that the brain links this first experience of fear and trauma with other things in life that make you feel scared or uneasy so that's why if you dream about your teeth falling out as an adult it just means you're scared or worry about the changes going on in your life right now that does make sense right it's your brain saying whoa this stuff is worrying (laughs) okay which obviously makes sense about what's going on in the world right now. Yeah, for definitely. sure. I haven't had one of those dreams in a while. Really? But yeah, oh like it's been, uh, I want to say probably like half a year since I've had like a teeth falling out dream. I never seem to really understand why I have the dreams. Like I can't connect. Even if you read up on it? Yeah. Like, I mean, the, mm. the dreams itself make sense. But it's really hard. Like, I feel like I have really crazy dreams and I can't always relate them to something going on in my life. Like, obviously, I do sometimes. And I definitely had a lot more reoccurring dreams when my anxiety was really bad. So that does make sense because, like, 
a lot of them were anxiety related dreams and the teeth falling out dreams for me always feel so real every single time I have them I think in the dream like oh my god it actually happened in real life like in my dream it feels so real that I'm thinking okay it happened yeah and you're like how do I get go back from this and it like I can feel them like sometimes I hold them in my hand because I'm like I don't yeah. want to lose them yeah and, oh, maybe oh that means god, something so <laughs> yeah okay so what I wanted to say about this dream like topic is that I started having teeth falling out dreams a really long time ago like from when I was pretty young and all of my teeth would fall out and I thought like I was the only one that would have dreams like that but it's so strange that without knowing it basically everyone else is having that same dream about your teeth falling out isn't that weird like Hmm. (laughs) that you think that like these types of reoccurring dreams that are so common But, like, nobody knew that anybody else was having that type of dream. But for some reason, we all have the same themes in our dreams. Yeah. So strange. It kind of makes it interesting kind of connecting that to anxiety, I guess. Because we talked about that in our episode, too. Like, all these things that, especially when you're young, you think, it's just me. I'm crazy. Yeah. That's interesting. So I guess with the teeth falling out, I could say sure, especially now and that I had it last night. That's really funny. (laughs) Yeah, it is. (laughs) I mean, the changes going on right now are pretty crazy. The unknown is scary. Yeah, definitely. So maybe that's where it's coming from. Did you find something different about that dream? Losing teeth. So it could be related to feeling unattractive or not good enough. Ah. The inability to articulate or express oneself or a fear of losing an important aspect in your life. So I definitely relate to the fear of losing an important aspect in your life. That makes really good sense because like teeth are important. So if you lose this like necessary basic human need or whatever like your teeth in a dream could represent like losing something important in your life or the obviously the fear of losing it and you can't go back from that like you can't put your teeth back in in the dream I feel like that could be more relatable to me that like you don't want to lose something that's like super important to you not that like anything is threatening losing that thing it's just that like it's super important to you your your worst fear would be losing it yeah and it's kind of the same thing as not being good enough like losing your sense of self Although teeth are obviously not essential to living, obviously we all have them. So it's like, would be really Mm -hmm. hard to lose them. And so losing your sense of self would be hard as well. So (laughs) I literally hate those dreams so much because of how real they feel. Yeah. I think we both had our spouses cheating as well. Yes. (laughs) First of all, I've woken up like physically crying from these dreams. Oh, I've woken yeah. up like looking at Spencer like, boy, you better get out of the house right now. Yeah, how dare I'm mad you? At you. And Spencer <laughs> is actually so funny when this happens. Like, I'm like, oh, Spencer, I had another dream about you cheating on me, whatever. It's almost always with his ex or someone that I know. It's not like usually random. And he's always throwing it in my face in the dream. In the dream. Ooh, rude. Yeah. Spencer. So, and I obviously told him that. And now every yeah. time I have a dream like that, he's like, oh, that's so, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's so cute. I'm like, like, thank you because I'm hurt. <laughs> you hurt, you dream you hurt my feelings. <laughs> and I feel like oh. he actually feels bad and it's kind of cute. Spencer is so empathetic like he really feels yeah. your he does your pain even if it's not real what he did that's so <laughs> funny I've, if i like i've had those dreams with jesse too and usually it's actually a random person like i, I think oh, it's see, interesting. it's been rare that it has been someone that i know in the dreams it's usually somebody totally random that i've like never seen before and sometimes i don't even actually see the person i just like know that it happened i guess <laughs> in the morning i'm like you cheated on me again last night <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes what did i do to you <laughs> like what what did i do wrong to make you think that i'm always cheating on you in in your dreams and i'm like nothing it just i don't know it just happens <laughs> i feel like that is like a very common dream to have though like so I've definitely heard a lot of people that I've talked to they've also had that dream so what does it mean did you look it up this is one that I didn't actually look up. okay it says if you're in a relationship and you've ever been cheated on in the past you'll remember that sinking feeling when you first found out 
I have been cheated on before, but there it was kind of, I found out like after the fact and after we mm-hmm. were already broken up. So so it didn't really like hurt. Yeah, like I right. honestly when I found out I was like, yeah, figures. Yeah, like not surprised. But yeah, so I didn't really have like a sinking feeling, I guess. It would just be like a normal fear, I think. I think so. Yeah, cuz then it says this has been wired into your brain and heavily labeled as bad. So, whenever you're in a relationship, we spend a little bit of time dreaming or thinking about what if. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think we've all felt that before. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Again, maybe that's me going worst case scenario if someone doesn't answer me right away. I'm like, oh, great. Yes. Oh, great. He's in a they hotel with me. someone else. They're cheating on me. Like, that's it. <laughs> Spencer doesn't reply for five minutes. Yeah. Who is she? <laughs> Who is it? We always joke, like, if Spencer's coming home early, especially now that I'm home a lot all the time, he'll call me and right. be like, okay, hey, I'm coming home. Tell your boyfriend to leave. Like, I'm coming home early. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) It's kind of like Jesse and I will joke about, like, if one of us says something to the other person, and we're like, wait, how do you not remember that? Like, this is what we did, like, a month ago or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just don't remember doing that. And they're like, oh, it must have been my other girlfriend. Yeah. Or it must have been my other boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so easy to joke about stuff like that. But then it's probably feeding into our, like, cheating dreams. Exactly. I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's good. I thought it was going to be more, like, psychological. It is good, actually. That's, like, a like a relieving thing to hear. Yeah. That's why I'm, like, scared of some of these because I'm, like, it's going to be, like, you hate yourself. And I'm going to be, like, oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) It's really strange that I've been – I've had, like, I want to say at least – three dreams where I've been chased by like a giant snake like the basilisk in Harry Potter oh my gosh yeah like a giant snake was chasing me so then do you interpret or or look up being chased or do you look up snakes I would probably look up both because like true and see if there's any connection spiders show up in my dream so much that I have actually (laughs) One of the nights that Jesse was over, this was like a few years ago, I was dreaming of a spider, like a big spider. And I woke up and you know how you're like still half dreaming and you can kind of like see what you were dreaming? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. When you first wake up. Yep. Yeah. When you first wake up. So like I was still like half dreaming that this spider was on my nightstand and it was like a huge spider. <laughs> and I woke up and I was Ugh. like, a spider. <laughs> <laughs> And I woke Jesse up because I said spider out loud. He was like, what? And I was like, it was, it was a spider. He got out of bed and he was going to go sleep in another room. And he was, I was like, where are you going? And he's like, I'm not going to sleep in here if there's a, a, if there's a spider. And I was like, it was a dream. And then I went back to sleep. <laughs> I just oh, looked at him like, are you, are you stupid? stupid? <laughs> yeah, like it was a dream, duh. And he's like, you scared me so bad. Like you said, spider. And then... <laughs> like i'm out like i'm not sleeping in here (laughs) and i was just like do you think i would be like still laying in bed if there was an actual like huge spider on my nightstand probably not but like i have those reoccurring dreams where just like spiders show up and they also chase me being chased is apparently a common dream in people with anxiety because it's like running away from your anxiety it's like something that you cannot get away from and in these dreams like i it's just like the most exhausting dream where i just run and run and run and run and run and i don't stop running in my dream that is one that i haven't had for a few years probably because i've been on anxiety medication and it's been like so much better I have to say I do have dreams about snakes. I also am not scared of snakes at all. In my dreams, I can't get away from them. And they're like annoying. And not that they're chasing me. Like in my dream, I was trying, I was on like a safari or something and there was snakes Uh everywhere. And I was like, can you just move? I'm trying to see an elephant. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? It's super weird. I also dream about spiders, but I'm terrified of them. So they're like full on nightmares and there's usually like hundreds of them not just like one like I'll wake up in my dream and my room will be full of spiders ew that's so overwhelming I cannot imagine that ew (laughs) I don't think I've ever had it like that bad I've definitely had dreams of like a swarm of spiders that just like come out of something and then they're like chasing you and you're like ah 
I am not enjoying talking about this right now. Neither am I. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. Yeah. I know, like, <laughs> I, most of my dreams have to do with like one spider and it's usually like a very large spider and it's usually chasing me. <laughs> but like that makes sense because I'm terrified of spiders. So yeah. like that would be like my only explanation for a dream like that is that we're both just like super afraid of spiders. Ugh. Give me the heebie jeebies. We need to stop. So the snakes are a very common animal to dream about because they're easily linked to lies and deception. It was, did you realize you said deception? Yeah, I did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, did <you? laughs> I was like, oh my God, she sounded like a snake. <laughs> to dream about a snake can mean that you're anxious about something or you think someone around you is lying about something. Oh, shoot. Oh, <laughs> that's deep. But I can't relate that to anything, though. Oh my god. I well, this is a thing too. So I'm thinking of just being anxious in general, I guess. Am I linking it just because I'm trying to link it to anything? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That one's a really hard one for me to like connect to anything. Like you said, we we both aren't afraid of snakes. But I think it's less about like what it actually is in your dream. And just like what it symbolizes. And what it symbolizes, yeah. Like yeah, this one so. is lying and deception. I don't know. I kind of always think people are lying. Yeah. <laughs> in some like way. Like in general? Yeah. Yeah. Not about everything, Maybe obviously. Maybe I do. Yeah. Maybe I do too then. Like, because I can't really think of anything specific that I could relate it to. Mm -hmm. But I guess just like maybe like not being able to trust like everyone 100%. Yeah. Kind of goes into it, I guess. Yeah. I think that is exactly where I would go with that. And we're just going to skip over spiders because I don't want to talk about it no more. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> We've just <laughs> established that we're scared of them and that's why we have nightmares about them. <laughs> um. Okay. So my next one is uh, having sex. I am very lucky. I have some great sex dreams. <laughs> Good for you. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was at a point where I would either have like a nightmare or a sex dream. Uh huh. Just one or the other, and that's it. It it varies now, but uh, for the interpretation, it says our bodies are wired to want food, shelter, love, and sex. That is what keeps us alive for, or that is what has kept us alive for such a long time. So our brains think about sex fairly often. To dream about sex usually indicates that you're a healthy adult and everything's working the way it should. Thanks, oh, dreams. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so if you think about it before bed, you might dream about it too. This is a good one to dream about because you can turn it into a lucid dream. Oh. Which is exactly what I was going to say. Really? That, yeah, this is the situation where I have the most ability to control. Interesting. And I wonder why? Is it because, like, it's obviously something that you do in real life, so you're, like, more comfortable controlling it. Like, I oh, wonder maybe. what the reason would be for that being, you know, a dream that you can actually easily control. And I find the, mo the most, the area in which I can control it the most is deciding to have it or not. Oh. Oh. So if I have a dream, so sorry, Spencer, plug your ears. <laughs> If I have a dream that I'm having sex with someone other than Spencer, yeah, then sometimes I'm like, oh, God, I can't do this. Like, I'm in a relationship. Ew, get away from me. Oh. But then if I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's a dream. <laughs> You're like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay. That's so funny. I don't know if I've ever dreamt, like, controlling something like that. And then so obviously at that time i know it's a dream of course i know yeah. what i'm doing is not like real <laughs> good dreams are honestly the best uh -huh. it's rare i don't want to say rare for me to have like a good dream but like it kind of is most of my dreams are kind of like meh or they're bad <laughs> it's it is interesting though how much it affects your mood yes oh my god yes you wake up and you're either like if you have a good dream then you're like, ah, okay, great. That was fun. Like, what a nice start to my day. Yeah. Or it could freaking ruin your day. And there's some dreams that are really bad and feel so real. And if they're like emotional and you feel that emotion all day long. Yeah. It carries into your, into your day so easily. If it's like a very deep emotional dream, like especially sometimes if it's just like an actual scary dream, not about spiders, but just like scary, mm -hmm. I will be like paranoid for the rest of the day. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. One of my reoccurring dreams that's like kind of good, but I also think of it as a bad dream is like getting a, a puppy. Aww. <laughs> I'm so happy in the dream because like I want another puppy <laughs> and like I've had these dreams since I was like a kid. It's just like getting a dog and best feeling ever so happy oh my god I have like another dog and then I wake up and I'm like well I don't have another dog like, yeah. what the heck <laughs> I have, yeah so like it's a good dream but then you wake up and you're like oh disappointed this isn't real <laughs> I have Luna though and Luna's great I think Luna would love to have a sister it'd be well, yeah I can't wait good. I know me too <laughs> one day oh one of my like reoccurring theme that I have is I'm going to group them together because they're they're both pretty similar. And that's either being late for an event or missing an event, not being prepared for like a test, a performance, or this is like three of my reoccurring dreams. But like I said, I think that they all kind of relate to each other and being back in school and not remembering what class I have next and where oh, it worst. is and like it's actually the worst feeling ever. I think it's because I have like a major fear of it just makes me so uncomfortable to not be prepared for things. If I forget something, it's just like an awful, awful feeling. So I feel like I know why I have those dreams. But I think I did look up some things about like this sort of theme. I think too, it has to do with being like self-employed and like responsible for your own work lifestyle I guess like it's you and only you that are responsible for what happens for you you know so that could make a little bit of sense exactly I think that definitely plays into why I would have those dreams like in a way I don't like being responsible for things but I've like chosen a career that I have to be the sole person to be responsible for everything that gets done that definitely translates into that like style of dream for sure because if I forget something or if I'm not prepared I'm just like oh god like it can't get done like I'm screwed nothing's gonna happen now the dream about people being back in school and either like missing a test not being prepared for a test with me forgetting what class is next it said that it's actually like most common in people who are not in school anymore and I was like oh that's interesting because like <laughs> I haven't been in school for I don't know how long and I constantly have these dreams. I just had one like a couple nights ago that I was like in a classroom. I think I was in college and I had no idea what class was next, but I knew in my mind like I had been doing this all year long and for some reason I had like forgotten what class was next. I couldn't find it in my papers. I knew that it was getting closer to the time that I was going to have to get to this class. I didn't know where it was. It was like so stressful. And then it's also common in people who like have fear of what the future holds. Okay. Which is interesting. I was like, do I have a fear of what the future holds? Probably like most people I would assume don't you ever think about what is after YouTube oh yeah all the time <laughs> see that's where I would say for you is like what is the future going to look like for me in x amount of years yeah exactly these dreams I feel like are definitely like a subconscious fear of mm -hmm. mine because these are things that like I have accepted like I know that YouTube isn't forever and that's something that like I don't consciously worry yeah. about because I know obviously I'd figure it out like I'd, I'd move on to like a different career and I know that it's not a forever thing but then I guess like my subconscious is just kind of like dude you better figure this out because it's not forever and you don't know how long this is gonna last are you gonna make enough money to sustain like a family for a long time I have no idea but I guess that's what comes along with my job so it definitely does make sense to yeah, have those types so. of dreams for me I feel like you can interpret dreams so many different ways, but... Oh, definitely. That one makes the most sense, though. I like that one for you. Oof. <laughs> we did something good here. We're learning things. <laughs> um, my next one is very interesting because I think, like your last one, this is the one that I can date back forever. And it's being in a car accident, but it going off of a bridge into water. Oh. Ooh, that's scary. Yeah, I kind of had like a hard time searching for how to fully interpret it because it's not drowning. Like I wake up always on a bridge, always over water. But the only thing I can think of is where I was born. There used to or there still is like a pier. And mm -hmm. I used to be so afraid of driving 
up to this pier because there was water on one side. The water was always really high. And I always yeah. thought that the car was going to drive off into the water. So and like obviously now I'm fine. I'm fine anytime I'm going over a bridge when I'm in a car. I'm fine. And it's just yeah. weird how like I dream about <laughs> it. So the only thing I could really find was a car crash. So this one says it means that you're worried about something that's about to happen. So usually oh, if you're about okay. to have a job interview, your brain starts playing tricks, making you think, what if it goes wrong? It can also be reliving a memory if you've ever been in a crash, which I don't feel like it is. Um, but for most yeah. people, it just means that you're worried about the outcome of a future event you're planning for. Hmm. That does make sense. I think it also probably does relate a lot to your fear of driving like <laughs> by the water like a really high drop above water because it's like your brain well like I looked up something similar to what I dreamed too and it said like your brain is creating like the worst case what if scenario yeah I guess like based off of like you know your past fears or just like what could happen which does make sense I'm I'm realizing now that I I don't actually remember the last time that I had this dream I think that a dream journal I might actually start one. I kind of want to do one too. Yeah, because this could be very interesting. How it's saying, what if it goes wrong when I'm planning something? Did I did the last one I have happen right before the wedding or right before? Oh, you yeah. Know? Because I don't really remember. But now that we're learning all this stuff, the next time I have one of these dreams, I can kind of be like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, you can relate it or link it to like link it to like something going on in your life. One of the dreams that like I have that is similar to the car crash situation is I'm driving a car and the brakes aren't really working. Mm. Like they work, but they're um, like delayed. I have those two actually now that you say that. Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I'm I feel so weird right now, like reliving all these yeah. dreams. It's like a weird, very weird feeling. It's like a surreal yeah, thing. Yeah. funny. I, <laughs> it's very okay. strange. Now I want to know about this brake thing. Yeah, usually I'm driving a car. Usually it's a bigger car, like a truck or something. And I'm driving and, like, I press the brakes, but I have to keep, like, pumping them and, like, pressing them so hard to get the car to, like, stop or slow down before I hit something. And you realize it's not normal in yes. your dream. Yeah. Like, I okay. can tell, like, the brakes aren't working like they're supposed to be working. And I've been having that dream more in the past, maybe, like, five or six years, probably. I kind of have this weird thing that could kind of make sense to why I started having that actual dream. My parents have a minivan and that's what I started driving with and I hadn't driven it for so long and I I had to move their car for some reason and the brakes are so different in that minivan than in my Kia Soul that like I started to kind of panic because like I pressed the brakes I was parking the car but the car kept kind of moving a little bit and <laughs> I started to like freak out because I was like oh my god like I didn't press the brakes like quick enough or whatever and then I started to have this like panicky feeling that like the brakes weren't gonna work and then after that happened that's when the dream started happening which is kind of <laughs> like <laughs> funny that like maybe it's just that I like related that same feeling to something in a dream and then that's what kind of like manifested in it is that like I couldn't control the car and the brakes weren't working like what I read online is that it's definitely about like a fear of losing control or not being in control of something I totally relate to that because like if I'm not in control of some part of like my life I guess then I definitely start to get more anxious <laughs> yeah and that's why a dream journal would be really good I'm doing it would it be for sure. yeah I think I'm gonna start one too let's like let's buy them today <laughs> yeah and go online we'll, we'll reconvene in a year about all the ones yeah that we <laughs> thought that were something and I hate it when like I have a really cool dream and I try to remember it and like the more that you think about a dream you forget it which is really annoying so a dream journal would be awesome like as soon as you wake up just like start writing down what it was and then hopefully you don't forget it I would love to do that yeah and then also sometimes what happens is throughout the day you forget or you wake up not thinking about your dream and then something happens to like yeah make you remember and you're like 
Oh my god. It used to happen with people in high school a lot. I used to dream oh, really? I dream a lot about people. Like I could dream about you. I would be going to your concert. <laughs> like and I'm yeah. like, that's Britney. And Spencer's like, No, it's not. What the heck? That's blah blah blah. I'm like, No, that's Britney. What the heck? So I dream oh, so about that, like those kind of weird things a lot. So I used to do that in high school. I'd like walk by somebody and I'd be like, Oh god, I dreamt about that last night. <laughs> I had a dream you were a superstar last yeah. night and I went to your concert. <laughs> yeah. Or I saw your wiener last night. <laughs> we had sex in my dream last night <laughs> they're probably like oh cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're like and you're weird so another one that i have is seeing a dead relative alive so like not creepy most of the time oh. they're alive and i i'm like oh my god how are you here right now like i have so many questions oh. for you like they like came okay. back for a minute oh whoa that's so weird yeah that's usually what it is and sometimes yeah. if it's like I lost one of my good friends when I was 12 or 13 mm -hmm. and he comes back a lot I think he's the only one that sometimes he's just been alive this whole time in my dream but and I'm the only one that knows that he died earlier it's really weird interesting it's very yeah. weird the only one that I could really find and it not be so specific to that was just seeing mm -hmm. a dead relative. And then it just says it's your way of getting closure or seeing the person and just that you always want more time with them, which makes sense. And most of the time there, it's just like nice because I think what happens and I always have this fear of this is mm -hmm. forgetting them, you know, or like it's really hard when you start to like forget their voice or like. It, certain things about what they look like and that's why it's always nice to have pictures and stuff so that totally makes sense it's I think for me it's just I wake up from those dreams and I'm like oh that was so nice yeah like that dreaming can be so nice like you can literally recreate like anything in your dreams mm -hmm. and it's it's like a way to feel close to that person again and it's like the one of the only ways probably that you can really like genuinely feel that again. So I think that's like a really lovely dream to have. Yeah. And sometimes it can obviously be sad because you're like, oh, I yeah. miss them. But it's just like I feel for the people that don't dream, that dream specifically makes all the nightmares worth it almost because you're like, oh, that's oh, really yeah. nice. That must be like a kind of refreshing and like just more like a fulfilling dream. It's kind of like a safe a safe place unless something bad is happening in it because I always dream about my childhood home too and I read that that's like going back to a place of safety and love grow Aww. or like you know and it says like it depends on the upbringing you have but anytime that I dream about a house it's always my childhood house oh interesting and it probably just means like you feel safe like you said like it's a comforting they said for the most part it's a symbol of safety and love but sometimes if you're feeling scared in real life, it's your brain wanting to go back to something that's comfortable. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That does make a lot of sense. It's kind of like a safety blanket. Yeah. For your brain. <laughs> oh, that's that's like still nice I though. I like those ones. I think I've had like a couple dreams where I go back to my house in Tennessee. And they're also, again, they're, like nothing really crazy happens in it. It's just like... I'm just like in the house doing like normal things. Yeah. <laughs> Walking just through it. Life. Maybe going out back. Yeah. Just living my life. But it doesn't happen a lot. It's only I think maybe happened like two or three times in my dreams. I can really like remember at least. Yeah. But it's, it is a nice feeling. <laughs> uh, so the last one I have on my list is the death of a pet. Oh, yeah. I always. Oh, it sucks. And then I wake up and I'm like, Tucker, come here, please. Love me. Oh, I know. <laughs> I always like and it, I always see him die. Oh, that's so sad. I mean, I haven't read this part yet, but honestly, I am so terrified, like all people, obviously, of like the day that Tucker oh, yeah. dies. Yeah. I'm more just scared of like bringing him to the vet. I know that life will go on, obviously, but ugh, I am so dreading the like, ugh that part yeah me too I some days I look at Luna and I'm just like can you not die ever yeah just like, like why do we do this I to just ourselves? want you to be here like forever I know it's so sad in in a lot of ways you just wish that they would just like go peacefully in their sleep of course you, know? you don't want any anything to like feel pain when it happens no like, and you have to like then you have to make the decision and then it's like sad but the description says sometimes if you really in capital letters love and care for an animal it might be 
perfectly healthy for you to start to think what ha- would happen if it died like thanks tips your mind <laughs> plays tricks on you and sometimes you dream about it dying there's no real reason you're just worried about it okay fair enough so kelly we need to do our therapy for the week what has gotten you through this week i feel like ours might be the same this week because i am gonna say sunshine Ooh. Yeah, (laughs) I first of all, I've never been so tan in my life. And I'm sorry (laughs) for all of the people that do not live West Coast of Canada or the US because it's snowing everywhere else in Canada. But the sun makes the days go by so much faster. So it's it really does. And they're enjoyable. Uh, My therapy for this week was actually playing The Sims. (laughs) Oh, I can appreciate that. Yes. So I hadn't played it in so long and they have this thing going around on Instagram where you can get Sims 4 for like $5, I think. I decided to download it and uh, yeah, I've been playing it like crazy. I made a Sim that looks like myself. I made one that looks like (laughs) Jesse, but I did not name them our names because I was like, what if something happens like really bad? (laughs) I saw someone who had named their Sims like her and her husband's and then he died Uh and she was like oh my god I'm so sad so I was like I'm gonna name them (sighs) something like totally unrelated but it's been so much fun I'm so glad I downloaded it you play that on the on your computer right yeah on my mac maybe I'll just do that highly recommend it It's, (laughs) it's so great that does about wrap up this episode as always please follow us on instagram at not your therapist If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you hate us, (laughs) let us know. (laughs) At uh, notyourtherapist at gmail.com. We will be checking the emails. If you have literally anything to say to us, just say it. Okay, everyone. Until next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.